Just a quick reminder that if you want to support Concepts and Legends, please remember to like and subscribe. And you can also show your support by using our TCG affiliate link for any and all of your magic needs by using the link you see here or below in the description. Any and all help is greatly appreciated and helps us bring you more videos like the one that is starting right now. Today's interview subject, MTG artist Matt Stewart was one of the more insightful artists I've spoken to, and I will definitely be stealing one of his answers in future art discussions. But which answer will I be stealing? Only one way to find out. So would you say that your love of fantasy was really initiated by Tolkien? Um, that and, yeah, probably that and Dungeons and Dragons. I remember, um, you know, playing D and D when I was probably like ten with my friend down the street. He had to keep to the Borderlands the module, and I remember borrowing it from him and drawing all the pictures out of it and stuff like that. All the Errol Otis pictures and things like that. And that kind of that kind of got me into fantasy initially. And then, like my dad had all these fantasy book covers, you know, books and book covers around so you know he's like he gave me the hobbit he said you should probably try reading this you might like it and that kind of became you know that's why i am the way i am now so it's yeah it's it's an epic i i didn't read it until college believe it or not yeah. but um it's it's great uh and yeah. I, i'm curious to know uh and i'm gonna maybe mispronounce his name but you 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 mentioned a book called the art um of like um the art of michael whalen is is that yeah mm-hmm how how did that you said in interviews that that changed you from doing um art as a hobby to considering it as a career what what were some of the points that that book made that made you the switch well in in the book he talks about he has the the book is like an art book and it's split into two parts it's one is his commercial covers and then uh, the other one is his like visions his his gallery work and in the part with the commercial covers he talks about um, being a book cover artist and deadlines and doing, and you know, what the art directors wanted and things like that. And there's, there's also interviews in the book that I read. I got this book when I was in high school. My mom got it for me for Christmas. And uh, it was the first time I kind of really put the two together where, you know, wow, this guy does this for a living and, and everything. And, you know, I always, you know, you kind of just grow up thinking like, well, artists are kind of just, they just, they just became artists because they're geniuses and they, you know, and, uh, you know, you never kind of think of it as something that it's as like a job. You just think of it as super talented people who kind of just do this thing, you know? Right. And, right. Uh, and art I guess it just never, kind of made, made the connection. So. Yeah. And art classes and any of the arts, they don't teach about the, the business side of yeah. it. And so yeah. I take it that book, was giving you some sort of insight. Yeah, it, it was one of the first that made that connection for me. That's really awesome. I mean, it's and you know, it's probably why I think so many artists are not good at business is because nobody pulls them aside and says, you know, you should take a business class or you should understand yeah. that these are that this is a business. You know, it's not show business. Yeah. It's it's you know, it's not just making yeah. fantastic stuff. But um, so yeah. what was the first? Like, what was the first job that, like, you'd say was significant to you that you were being paid as a as an artist? Um. Hmm. Well, I, I'd done um, portraits for people. I, you know, as a, a growing up as an artist, you always get little commissions. Or, oh, you know, you, somebody likes to draw, so you know. Um, but I think really it was in art school I got hired to do. Um, through one of my professors, I got hired to draw like somebody's portrait and I went to their house and um, I ended up, uh, it was like a draw their, you know, they wanted a portrait of their kids and stuff. And I had, you know, I had drawn from life in class, but um, I draw, you know, they wanted me to come to their house and, and draw, you know, do a session with their, you know, where I'm painting their kids. And I probably wasn't good enough to be painting from life on a deadline with for money yet so i i kind of the what i came up with when i was there wasn't that good but i ended up they ended up giving me photographs and i ended up painting from the photographs and they they were happy with what they got but it was probably the first paying job i had gotten that i can remember you know um that's awesome so and i imagine they were like well-to-do people and so it was probably intimidating yeah I mean, yeah they, they seemed like they had a 
pretty nice house. So I assume <laughs> yeah. Right. Anybody who has paintings of their families hanging, it's it's a good sign. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when you first uh, w when you first got involved with magic, uh, how did you get? What was what? How, did you submit your stuff the way that I've heard other people do, or how did you get connected with it? Um, well, I was working with an agent at the time. I was part of a gallery called Doorway Gallery, and uh, they, you know, they always they worked as uh, my agent. Uh, was name, her name was Angie Sullins, and uh, she actually got me my first commissions with Wizard of the Coast, but it wasn't with so much with magic. I had done um, Forgotten Realms novel covers. And um, like it was, um, I think the Knights of Mist Draenor series by Ed Greenwood. I'd done like three covers, and wow. and then I had done a Drizzt cover for them for their collector's edition. And um, they asked me, you know, hey, are you interested? Would you be interested in doing magic? And uh, you know, I was like, oh yeah, definitely, sure, because I I used to, I wasn't a huge player. I played a few times in college before, but. I had always bought cards just for the art, you know, like, yes, um, yeah. you know, like yeah, anytime it, like, it was like Mark Zug or, you know, Carl Critchlow and all the, you know, Donato and, you know, all these guys, Kev Walker, like I'd always look for, you know, artists I liked and stuff like that. And, um, you know, just kept their cards around just to look at, you know, and I, um, yeah, so I getting understand. magic was like, wow, it was, you know, it was awesome. So, and That's then, I'm sorry. No. Go on. I didn't mean to. No, it was like that's it. So I used to get these cards just to look at the the art and everything. So you know, when they offered the jobs for me, I basically jumped at the chance. And I had done. I, I so I had gotten a couple. It was for the Future Sight block. It was like Narc Amoeba and Lumosian Revivalist, and um, and then Second Wind. And then I kind of sat out a block for Lorwyn. I thought maybe I, you know. I flunked the interview in a sense, but then when the Lara block came out, like I got a bunch more. So then, and then it's been pretty steady since then. So. Why, what made you think that you flunked? Cause I do remember you saying in an interview that you felt like you might, that they weren't at your best work, um, but people still love them. I mean, I, I think so. I just think, well, because I, I, I had basically, um, I hadn't gotten any um, for a while. It was almost like a year where I didn't like, getting it. it was like I did some and then I didn't hear back and I was like oh man maybe I didn't they didn't like my work and uh I probably didn't put as much time as I would into them as I would into a piece now I probably didn't put as much time because I was also working on some book covers at the same time um I was working on this book cover um for an Ed Greenwood book called Swords of Dragonfire I think it's called and uh, it had like a million figures in it. So the art, the magic stuff, I was kind of balancing the two. And I was also very early in my career and I was still struggling with oils and learning and stuff like that. It was early on. You're not, you know, as you, as you work more and more, you start to understand the medium more and you make less mistakes and then you can work quicker. But that it was just still, I was kind of still like a beginner artist in a way. Right, you were still kind of just managing your time yeah. also, you know, not really sure, you know, how long it's going to take yeah. to do a certain thing. I get right, it. Right, exactly. Yeah, managing the whole, like, yeah, even, like, learning how quick you are and, and managing the whole freelance scheduling thing and how much work to take and all that stuff. So. Um, your paintings, what I, what's really, like, there's recurring themes that I've noticed in them, and, like, one that I, that I can go right off the bat is you, um, you, you are very good at painting sinister people and <laughs> That's... i'm i'm wondering do you like do you get uh do you use um models for that or do you do you create the faces as from a pastiche because the some of the the paintings that you do are just so they're so sinister with these uh faces what what when um when i can get a good model i use a model like when i can find somebody who kind of fits the role usually it's a lot of times it's like a family member um but if i don't like i'll use myself or my wife and we'll sort of ham it up for the camera and then i just use like i'll use my like the lighting and the muscles on my face and but i'll sort of find people like just from photographs like almost like a casting director in a movie like who looks like the part i'm imagining you know like 
So, and then I'll try to make their face, you know, look that way. I'll try to like extrapolate their facial, like they're trying to make their nose, but make it stretch like my nose is when I'm, you know, scratching my nose or something and thinking about the muscles inside that. It's just because it's sometimes you just can't find the right model. And, right. You know, going, you know, I mean, you can, there's things like model mayhem where you can hire models and stuff, but sometimes it's so like, you know, I'm more, you just don't have the time or, and especially with like COVID now, like mm. um, the way it's been in the past year, it's like, I'm reluctant to hire anybody that like, they're, you know, to deal with having somebody come to the house or whatever they might, or they don't want to come here, you know? So it's been being able to get that down and being able to just draw and use your imagination for stuff like that, you know, guided by reality and reference, but being able to sort of make stuff up has helped a lot. So, because yeah, I mean, and I imagine Model Mayhem doesn't really have a lot of people like the Nefalia, the, um, the Nefalia um, smuggler. Is probably yeah. not. They're not going to find like models like that. Well, that that's another thing. Like, I tried to. I went on there one time and I tried to find like an old woman and I couldn't find any. I found one model that fit and they had like not logged in in like three years and like they were probably moved away or something or even worse, but like, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. I was like, oh, well, I, you know, I got to just, you know, age the person, you know, naturally, but, but going back to Nefalia Smuggler, like that was my father-in-law, like he's passed on now, but he posed for a number of pieces for me when he was around. And what, uh, what other pieces did he pose for? He posed for Architects of Will. Mm -hmm. um it's that's actually like me and my mother-in-law and my father-in-law wow. and um he also posed well actually he didn't pose for it but i used a lot of pictures of him for the edge wall innkeeper yes i know? was gonna say that i was gonna i yeah. was gonna ask if it was the same model yeah like i kind of you know like took a lot of pictures of him um and used him as a model I posed myself, but like then I used him as a model, like for the face and you know everything like that. Was he an That's actor? That's probably more accurate to who he was. He's probably more. He's much more of an edge wall innkeeper in reality than a um, a nefarious smuggler. Oh yeah, no. Anybody who I've noticed that anybody who's able to look sinister, like on film, like they're usually yeah. the sweetest people in real yeah. life. Like it's yeah. just interesting, like that. Um, yeah. uh, also, a, a manic scribe too. I, that one. I mean, that's who, who did you did you use? That was that, was, that that's totally my wife, Gina. Gina she Mataraz. knocked it out of the park. I mean, yeah. like that one is that one is is so crazy creepy. And also, mm -hmm. what's interesting is that you you seem to be uh, the person where a lot of your your cards are sort of like the pre Emrakul Eldrazi, like the touches mm -hmm. of the Eldrazi are kicking in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the you, little hints. Of but you don't have like a full blown Eldrazi, which I, I that's mm -hmm. one thing that I wish I could have seen is 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 you doing like an actual Eldrazi Eldrazi. Yeah. But um, you're you know you see that like one tentacle popping out in Manic Scribe, um, yeah. or I'm or and, and the uh, one in uh, the, um, what was yeah. the name? I'm sorry, per Paranoid Parish Blade. That guy's terrifying. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, is that's that, me. that that's you? <laughs> that's like that one is obvious. Yeah, it's like it's like clearly it's like almost a self-portrait of me, but yeah. Have you been an, an actor ever? No, no, just not just hammed it up for photo reference and stuff. I, so. It's very expressive. <laughs> um so uh, one thing that I, I read about uh, Ed, Ed, that was really cool was the way you discussed the slash um, panther and the blur yeah. movements. Um, mm -hmm. What other, like, could you maybe give another example of like sort of techniques that you've used in pieces that are similar to that, where you've used certain tricks to get an effect? Um, hmm. With the, with the slash panther, it was more like the motion blur. You know? Yeah. Um, hmm. I mean, I'm most wondering. of the time, it's, most of the time, it's just observation. Um, you know, um, I'm trying to think of pieces. Well, because you some. like for like you do such. Um, what's cool about yourself is like uh, I've noticed that when you do art for maybe something that has more like sort of an like an obtuse sort of name, where like for instance, let's see, like um, pyrotechnics, right? From mm -hmm. from a distance, it just looks like absolute pandemonium, 
And then mm-hmm. when you get close up and you really look at it and you see what this, what it is, that's actually, you know, uh, some uh, machine imitating a dragon and firing it at the dragon. You use these yeah. interesting angles. Um, yeah. I just wondered if that was like sort of a technique that you were fond of because can do stuff I've noticed that's very straight on like the wicked mm-hmm. um, stepmother, for instance. Mm-hmm. And then the other ones you can do sort of like these sort of crazy angles and sort of this pandemonium. Is that a mm-hmm. conscious thing you do? No, I mean, it's just, it's just finding a good camera angle a lot of times, especially finding something dynamic, especially with action, you know, it it's, makes it more interesting if the camera angles at a different, you know, maybe looking up or looking down, like having the horizon line in the middle is oftentimes I mean, it works for some pictures, but you want to have a sort of, you want to suggest some action and movement. It's good to, you know, move the camera around or make the high rising line, you know, looking up or looking down, you know. Um, And Lost in the Woods, too, is another one that's like, I I still am not sure. I I thought about it and I can't be sure if you're if you're seeing them from the ground up, that if the guy is is. The one guy you can't tell if either he's looking straight upward or if he's fallen well, to the ground dead. I mean, that's kind of it's like that's what it's kind of supposed to be. It's like so it's you're supposed to be confused. It, they're looking up, but they're seeing the ground. So right. it's like they're it's supposed to be total disorientation. So. It works. I mean, like yeah. I, I'm sitting there like I literally had it in paint. And I was just sort of like eh, eh, yeah. trying to figure yeah. out what I was looking at um, yeah. with quicksand. Um what was the story behind that? Because it's first of all, it's it's such a haunting, like, shot. Just the, um, they the, just the, want, they, but there's a hook they, they, that's you know, in yeah. the thing. What's the story about the hook? Like, I wonder what what the brief said about that. Well, it's just um, they wanted. I believe they wanted, if I remember correctly, they wanted footprints. Because I mean, it's a patch of sand, but they want to tell a story with it too. So there's a character. You see the footprints, and then you see like a a purple cloth on t- sitting on top of the sand, and then the hook is just them. They had fallen into this quicksand, and then they sunk down, and what, the only thing that's left of them is that garment of clothing, you know. And 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 then the the hook is basically their attempt at getting out of the sand that obviously oh. failed. So. Oh, that's brutal. Like, so, I mean, yeah. of, or maybe a, they didn't, maybe they got away and they left that there. Who knows? It's in the eye of the beholder, I guess, you know, I beheld it to be tragic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's like you're trying to tell a story visually. So there's little clues that, you know. Yeah. And you, and you definitely do. I mean, you definitely are able to do that. Like, um, one, one, like, what would you say your scariest, like, or at least in your personal opinion, your creep your creepiest painting is um probably the one where it's like it was an innistrad car oh man i I forget the name of it um but it was um a woman holding like looking down in in, like a pot of water like she's washing her Mm -hmm. face and she has um like boils Boils. and stuff on her face you know um and don't worry some deformity gruesome deformity which i that's your wife posing as well yeah, she she was always she she says you you always every time you ask me to pose you either make me creepy or crazy or something like that. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, so she she hated that one, but like I I thought that was like disturbing the most it because is. I had to paint like these boils and had the light hitting them and things like that. And I but. think um my 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 favorite is the demon the Eldrazi demon um mind raker I think it's called I. Oh, the mind rake, the mind rake demon. Oh, mind rake demon. Yeah, that's it. That one yeah. is there. It almost appears to be moving the way that it's done. Yeah. I mean, it's it's never ending, and it's sort of like that's yeah. one where I see the artwork, and I'm like, I feel like there could have been a huge story written about this horrifying thing. I mean, I mm-hmm. compared to something like Obnixilis, I'm just kind of like Obnixilis, mm-hmm. just kind of, and that yeah. thing is just oh, terrifying. Oh. Um. Did you use what did you use to 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 get inspiration for like the way that it it looks because it's almost like it's wood and yet it's it's slimy it's it's a crazy texture. Um, I don't know, just you know just doing a demon. I think some of the anatomy is um 
Well, they had the, the, they had like the second like pair of eyes, like with the Eldrazi stuff. I think they'd have like a second pair of eyes growing into its head or something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, he had like this the metal things like into his arms. You know, mm-hmm. there are things like that that were just Eldrazi stuff like that. I think his anatomy. I actually think I looked at like a kangaroo for a torso. Like, cause like there's all these pictures on the internet of these really built kangaroos. Yeah. Those, and yeah. like, <laughs> and I was like, wow, that, that, that anatomy is kind of funky. Like I got to work that into something. So I think his, like his, his torso is kind of influenced a bit by like a kangaroo. Believe that's it or not. Fascinating. Yeah. I believe so now like, looking, that's interesting. It, yeah. It, and they are really jacked. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, so if, if a kangaroo kicks you, it's you're yeah. in trouble. <laughs> Like they're they're like they're I can't believe people used to box with them. I'm like, who's gonna who's gonna win in that fight? The kangaroo yeah, is gonna <laughs> it's like this giant like seven foot marsupial. Um mm. if you had to let's see, if you had to like um go back and say like what was it that made you sort of the promo guy? Because you are the promo judge card guy, it seems. Um what was what was the impetus that led to that and um you know, how, how do you, how do you, uh, you know, feel about holding that honor? I didn't know I had that honor. I, I've, I mean, I've, I've done, done it on fine, you. Yes. But I think, I mean, if, I mean, which judge well, promos. Well, like, you did uh, a force of a force of will, yeah, force and, of will and the new and one, the, the, time the, twister. but they, time they twister. were done. They were done early. Like, so when I did them, they, I don't know that they were judge promos. They were, they were basically first as prizes for like vintage tournaments. Yeah. So like they commissioned me to do the painting and then they did give away the, the, so wizards would buy the actual painting and um, give them away as, um, as prizes for like a vintage tournament. And I forget what the other one was time twister was exactly for, but anyway, like a lot of artists have kind of done that now too. Like they're always looking for the traditional artists to do that and stuff. Yeah, and but, you um, also you also had um let's see I'm looking I'm looking it up here but on Scryfall Lake they, they had it Judge Promo for Gattic Teague you you, you did oh yeah I, yeah so I guess well. I have them <laughs> I guess and, I yeah. have them <laughs> and uh, Grand Arbiter Augustine the, the fourth, yeah as that's a yeah. new one I mean yeah. it's yeah that just yeah it recently came out and then of course Nicol Bolas yeah well that was a master the the masterpiece. Um, even, part. Yeah. yeah, even even masterpiece. more even more impressive. Yeah, yeah um, they had that, that set of masterpiece uh, for the War of Spark. Now, Wizards of the Coast purchased the original art. Um, like is for that- for Force of Will and for Time Twister, not for the other ones. That's cool. It, so, like, yeah, like they so can they the reason why they were commissioning it was to as a prize. So like I painted that painting and it was given, you know, it was sold to wizards and then it was given away before they even put it on a card at any time. It was only like a few years later that they started putting out these promo cards that had time twister and force of will. And that, yeah, so. it's, um, it's pretty crazy. Do you know how much your force of will goes for? Um, it's like $400. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 pretty impressive. And then yeah. you're the you're the mana crypt guy too, which is that's that's oh epic. yeah, I yeah, mean that's that epic. Yeah. And um, I, did you have any idea that you were going to be like part of such an icon? Did you know how iconic it was when you did it? Not not so much at the time. I mean, I knew they were popular older cards and stuff, but I didn't know. I didn't quite know exactly how popular they were at the time. So. Yeah. What, was, what was? I mean, it's it's. I'm I'm you know it's a true man. I'm I'm probably glad I didn't though because I probably would have gotten really nervous painting them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. I probably would have been. I mean, not 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 so much now, but early on in my career to get those types of things, I would have been like, oh man, I would have been, you know, really freaking out or something like that. But you know, I think I'm a little more confident in my abilities now. So. Yeah, you. I mean, well, uh, you really, you should, you should be, because it's, it's just, it's, it's great stuff. And I mean, it's, it, it's sort of like, it's, it's got, you've got a consistency in a sense that, you. I feel like you are just so fully 
uh, realized as an artist from the very beginning, like you had a style and your style was and has stayed the same and yeah. you've gotten more like you've got done flourishes and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. I feel like you were really like you had an idea of who you were right out the gate. Mm-hmm. And, oh, um, it's, it's surprising when you hear people say that um, about yourself, because it's kind of like to me, I, I don't see, even see myself as having a style. I just kind of paint the way I see it or the way I try to. I, I'm just thinking about how things look in reality, not so much. So st- my style is, it's almost like handwriting. It's like, you just have yes. a handwriting, you exactly. know, it's not like, I'm not trying to look, have a certain look. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, every artist is a, a sum, you know, total of their influences as well. So there's other artists that I've, I've referenced, you know, like, or my style is a part of, you know, painters I looked at, like, you know, like, you know, Keith Parkinson, Michael Whelan, Donato, the Hildebrandt brothers, all these are, you know, and then Howard Pyle and N.C. Wyeth and all the artists I looked at when I was learning how to paint, you know, but, you know, I'm not, I, you know, that becomes, as you get, as you get better and, you know, you get, you learn more, you know, your style just becomes more solidified as your own, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I never thought about it in that way. Um, but it just so happens. It's, it's funny though, because I've always seen, like, I can look at my older stuff and be like, oh, that's old. Like, like I see what's wrong with it or see what I would have done differently, but people see it as kind of a, you know, a, a, you know, continuous thing. So, um, it's just, it's just weird how, uh, for me to hear how people talk about your, you know, my art when I see it a certain way and they see it a certain way. Yeah, it's especially, it's like a lot of you guys, I feel bad for you. It's you, you guys don't get to see the version that we see. And yeah. you guys are sort of like stuck with the seeing the things that you wanted to do that are not there yeah. versus what we see, which is, which is, you know, it's, I always, they always say that like the way our, our self perception is that if um we were to run into a mirrored version of ourselves on the street because mm-hmm. of our distortion with how we look, we mm-hmm. would not even recognize ourselves on the street. That's how much dysmorphia the average person has when it comes mm-hmm. to seeing themselves. And so that's, that. I mean, that has to happen, I'd imagine, with mm-hmm. the painter and its painting. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you see, um, I see all the, well, I mean, I see the things I might have not, I, it never matches exactly what I had in my head. You know what I mean? It always either through, you know, the, the shortcomings or the changes or just the, um, you know, just, it's just, it's just, it's, you know, and then, and then I guess you just see like the things that, you know, you, it didn't work out or something like that. But, uh, you know, that, that, that's when in the very beginning, after a while you start to see the painting and it, um, for more of what it is, you forget those things. You're not as married to it after you, you know, after a certain amount of time and you can see it a little more objectively, but you still, you know, you still are very familiar with it. It's not as fresh as it might be for other viewers, you know, other people. So, um, Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's very, I don't know. It's strange, but you know. Yeah, it's. I, mean, I guess it must be for you guys because it is sort of like an out, like an out of body experience. Um, yeah. Do you know what being in that card crushed? Uh, what is being crushed and crushed? It's well, they asked for just a a bauble, you know, just anything really. Um, it's not anything specific. Um, it's just supposed to be like a Phyrexian. I think they literally in the description asked for like a bauble. You know, just a meaningless kind of object. Um, it's just supposed to have ooze, you know, <laughs> ooze coming out of it, which was fun because it's like I got, I think I mixed with balsamic vinegar and like maple syrup together just to kind of get the reference for how that gelatinous goop is supposed to look. And I think oh, I posed a, posed, wow. um, yeah. Did you use it in the actual painting itself? What the, no, just a photograph. I got you. Okay. So it's be like, you know, like just how the light hits, you know, like the, the sort of gelatinous stuff that, you know, so, you know, so you can get the right viscosity of the liquid mm-hmm. and then the way the light hits it and reflects off of it and things like that. 
it's um it's, i'm sorry i don't know if you heard my dog in the background i apologize yeah, it's all right <laughs> i'm sorry my phone was buzzing or something like that <laughs> i'm sorry about that so um uh what i would like to know uh what if you had to pick say a handful of paintings like if there was you know a bomb was going to go off uh, tomorrow and you had to mm -hmm. save like a handful of paintings by by any artists which paintings would those be man like any artists any artist living or any dead. artist any anywhere or just anywhere in any time any place um hmm, that's a hard question um i mean any like you know any rembrandt portraits i think would be <laughs> worth my time you know the, the, um you know any of these sort of uh, nc wyatt paintings that you know were in the brandy wine um i any of uh, the sort of it'd be it'd be really big but like the joan of arc that's in the met um by um gosh his name is slipping bastion lepage mm -hmm. that was always my favorite one of my favorite paintings to look at or the velasquez portrait um I think it's a, a portrait of a Moor. I'd probably say that. I'm thinking of all these paintings that I used to visit all the time when I went when I went to school at Parsons. I used to go to the Met pretty frequently to just look at paintings and try to take apart how they're done and things like oh, that. Yeah. I, I that's one of the things that stinks about the the whole quarantine is is, right. um, is like not being able to go to museums, you know, because and uh, look at paintings and. Um, yeah, so it's like, yeah, the, those paintings. But then it's like, you know, I'd save the King Lear painting from Edwin Austin Abbey too. You know, it's like, <laughs> so I could come up with a, I can come up with a whole book of paintings that I try to save. I, I don't think I'd have that much time though. Well, yeah, I mean, well, you know, but at this, it's, yeah. I just, I mean, I, I love to know what, what people's, um, as far as kind of what you were talking about, where when you, as an artist, you sort of come from a, you know, a DNA pool and from the artists that came before you, yeah. they, they uh, are, they're um, evident in what you become. And then, yeah. and, you know, and then, uh, you know, now you're influencing uh, younger people who are, you know, yeah. undoubtedly using mm -hmm. your, you know, your sort of like mm -hmm. uh, their, you know, like artistic mm -hmm. father, grandfather. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to me what, what artists, uh, what who they cling to as far mm -hmm. as that goes um what i'm really curious about the uh, ozymandias it, did i pronounce that correctly yeah it was on the uh met ozymandias uh, it's the one the the poem by uh name is it's the one where the feet are in the desert and it's about you know things on earth only lasting you know having a limited time and nothing lasts forever um but that that painting wasn't a literal illustration of the of the poem. It was just I think I needed a title, and that's what I was thinking of when I painted it. It was just really just the, that was for a show, an imaginative realism show that was in the Jonathan Levine Gallery, uh, probably five or six years ago. It was part of the um, it's curated by Pat Wilshire, um, and uh, it was just about sort of the uh it was just actually just a night it's just a stream of conscious drawing i had done in my sketchbook and i wanted to do a painting of it and it was an opportunity to do a painting of it so it's just about you know empires you know time passing you know and empires going away and nothing lasts forever kind of thing and i gave it that title just because that's what that poem is about you know i couldn't think of something like that I couldn't think of a good title. <laughs> just uh, that's that. a good title. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, but yeah, it's, but that's you know, it's like there's a lot of that in Tolkien too, like you know, things you know, not not lasting forever and time going on, you know, like the whole story with the elves and you know, mm -hmm. like that. So, do you do you get a, a lot of joy when you get to do the Tolkien illustrations? I I imagine that's that's got to be the most. Yeah, I do. I fun. enjoy it. I enjoy it. I love those stories. I, you know, again, I loved them since I was about 10 years old and, you know, that world is really, you know, real to me. So, you know, um, I, anytime I get to, you know, visit middle earth and do stuff, um, I'm always happy to do that. But 
you know, I, I, I really love doing anything that has a sort of, um, that has a, like a fully realized world. And, um, you know, magic is the same way that each setting has its own, you know, set of parameters that you stay in. It has its own little culture, its own little visual language, you know, for things. It has its own sort of consistent reality that, that you kind of have to work within. And that's the fun part of doing that is figuring out how when they give you a challenge like oh you know what would you know what would this sort of uh you know what would this person you know what would a craftsman in Kaladesh be wearing on their belt as opposed to you know somebody from Ravnica you know what I mean like things like that you know there's you know they they have a style guide and a lot of the work is put out in the style guide but you still have to make up a lot of things the style guide is just a set of guidelines and visual, you know, sort of, um, you know, it's like there's a little bit of seed, you know, but you have to sort of grow the rest of the, the tree in a sense. So it's like, you know, yeah. so I, I, that's why I, I, that's why I love being an illustrator, it's particularly with, with games, because there's a lot more opportunity to do those things. You know, with a lot of times with book covers, it's, you don't get to paint, you know, the, the weird imaginative things. You don't get to paint, you don't get to design a helmet for a rocks character, you know, like a rhinoceros head, you know what I mean? Like you don't get right. to do those types of things with a lot of other imp type of fantasy illustration. Yeah. You know, so what would you say was from the like beginning to finish the, the, the most like um, the easiest card in a sense that it just came out, the idea was there, it, it, it was made and bing, bang, boom. It was, it was accepted. Which, which one would you say was that one? Um, there's been uh, ones like that, but um, um, yeah, some are like that, and some are like more of a challenge. But anytime there's like natural lighting, and it's more of a landscape, and you know, or I get to put a lot of reality into it. Like I'd probably say the um, Horizon Seeker was mm -hmm. was probably really because I used I I there were a lot of things I. I do a lot of hiking. So I like that taken a lot of pictures and, and I had basically, you know, come up with a number of different ideas, but it just kind of like worked, you know, right. You know, I, you know, the waterfall is in Catterskill Falls and then a lot of the trees are in the Berkshires and, you know, and then, so, I mean, that one was pretty easy, you know, in terms of not easy, but like, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of problems, you know what I mean? It wasn't like I had to figure out, well, how does this work? How does this light source work with this light source or something like that? Um, I don't know. There, there, there are some that are like that and some that are just, you know, a lot of problems. But you know. What was the problematic one? Or well, there's not it? a problematic one. In a sense, um, but I see what you're saying. Like, like say, for, example, okay, so for example, like I did one called... Um, mystic barrier where like it was a, a mage and he's walking past a line of charging soldiers and he has a torch and the smoke from the torch is kind of creating like this invisible barrier and so the guys are running into this uh invisible barrier and like that one was tough because trying to figure out like well what does the barrier look like they, they didn't tell me like like it's invisible so how do i do that yeah, so I was just thinking tough. like, you know, well, maybe like it's like I thought of the movie Time Bandits when they're like when they come to the and they run into that invisible thing and they're kind of they glass and then you see. So I was thinking like, oh, like like so the characters hit that that invisible barrier and then they there's one camera shot where they, they go up against the glass. And I was thinking like, oh, that would be kind of a cool idea to do something like that. So it's like I ended up like taking pictures of myself up against the storm door downstairs. Like, <laughs> like my wife taking pictures of me, like putting my face up against the glass and things like that. So I hope that the, <laughs> that you still have these pictures. If there's any way that we could see them, I would love to see any photographic references. Cause the ones that you posted are <laughs> really fun. I'll post them. I mean, they're great. Like that group yeah. shot of you, you got the, it's uh, all of your friends sort of imitating that brawl. Yeah, um, and you're the goblin in the in the background. It's that's oh yeah, yeah 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 that one with the the night um night watch or uh, not night watch. Yeah, it was 
it was the like sort of Ravnica cops yeah beating up that one. <laughs> yeah so like the guy throwing the punch is a, is a friend of mine is he's another artist named Dom Dominic Sapinero yeah and he came to my house because he lives in Philly and um he came to my house and posed and that's me getting punched in the mouth and then um then it's also me getting like we're fighting in the back and stuff like that that was that was probably a good easy one too because it was just all figure based and it was all like you know straight on reference and you know he made such a great expression and so like i had all this great light with the muscles light hitting his head and the muscles in his face and he's you know he's going you know so it's like that that was probably a, a anyone that was probably an easy one anytime that there's a um it's really close to reality it, it tends and you have good reference it tends to be make it easier which is a good reason why you should really i know for me i need good reference i need to reference most things um i'm not like a you know an artist who can just bang out a magic card out of their head you know which there are some of them some artists are like that so it's just you know it's we all have the, our different strengths i guess yeah it's sort of the difference between somebody who can play music by ear and somebody who needs to read music it's in the end yeah. you're both creating music but it's just yeah. how you get it out there yeah and and also going you know going back to also the style thing sometimes their the thing that makes their great art great is their specific style it's it's so them but like i think i always think i'm more just kind of a reality like, like more straight on realism so you know i'm more interested you know interested in trying to get it as realistic as possible and then style just kind of it's just is what it is you know yeah the way you put it was actually really apt that it's almost more like it is a, more like a signature but, but yeah. you know it, it's interesting though that you're able to do uh demons and these fantastic things yeah. in a sense that they look it's almost like that's what it would look like if that was real even though yeah. it's a fantastic you know yeah. creature so yeah. it's it's an interesting dichotomy um yeah is there any card like is there any card that you saw that was done that you thought, oh, I wish I could have gotten a crack at it. Like maybe one that, you know, just a character or uh, something along those lines. Um, you know, I mean, hmm. I, I, I mean, I, I, it's, it's hard because it's like, they, usually it's like the artist who already did it did such a good job that like. I mean, um, I'm not, not, not saying anything pejorative yeah. about, about yeah. their work, but just something that you're like, oh, damn you know like i would have loved to have any, gotten a shot at that character i mean anytime it's uh, any, anytime it's like a, a sort of a a cool like a great face or, or character like i was thinking like i'd love to do a teferi you know or a um or you know a, or even just like like things like dragons like i you know i'd like to do some some dragons and stuff like that you know um, yeah like classical more of a classic i mean i've done like I did Sun Scorch Regent, yeah, and that was a dragon, but that was a very specific type of dragon, more of like something I get to design on my own or a classic looking dragon. But it's also like like when I see when I see um, stuff, it's usually like somebody like a character would have like a very interesting face or something like that. I'd love to cast. It's actually probably what it is is I I'd like to cast somebody as that character and paint and use it as an opportunity to port paint them you know as that character you know right i mean like, it, i i think you could definitely do teferi i mean echo mage yeah. is sort of but like, i love i see i loved the pieces that tyler jacobson did with that so like like he did a great job with that yes, so yeah like but i think he would i would love like painting that type of character or something but i've like i but they've given me some really interesting characters to paint myself so i can't you know yeah like, no i got you you're not not no cause yeah. for complaints yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed painting like Nerumiha, you know, because mm -hmm. it was just, you don't get to see, you know, sort of, sort of, you know, stocky, you know, women, you know, like, uh, you know, non-Caucasian women sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, 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 at, you know, she was such an interesting, to me, interesting character to paint, you know, so, and I had a lot of fun with it. So, like, stuff like that is what I like to do, you know. Yeah, you also I've noticed you you uh you were un, you know you're not afraid to to paint other races. There was there's never been 
that yeah. that um sort of like uh echo chamber thing that i, I think a lot of artists yeah. um inevitably well, stepped most, into most artists probably enjoy painting you know different types of people i mean you get bored of painting the same types of people all the time not even races not even just races but even like body types and things like that and age i like i love painting older characters you know what i mean like i love painting gandalf because he's an old guy you know what i mean i like painting you know like i love painting like the age in somebody that's why i was saying teferi like i thought about like the older teferi that tyler jacobson had painted like that's such a great painting that i love like that that's the kind of stuff i love to do like yeah um and um i just i wanted to know like is it najila i think it's najila the blade blossom najila, yeah how yeah. that orange how did you get that orange and if that and if that hasn't been named i think that that should be blade blossom orange because it is, <laughs> it's such a cool orange i mean yeah. is that how long did that take to get that that perfect color it's it's so vibrant i, I you know color is really it's just you know, color is how it how it reproduces. You know, I mean, the only real, the only legit, the only color I'm almost like I can control is the color in the original painting. So especially, so how it, you know, how it reproduces, I can't take credit for it in a way, right? I mean, you know, oftentimes also what's what a color looks like is what's also around it too. So when you think about color, when you think about painting a color think about what's around it, you know, um, you know, especially like with like a fire scene, like I just paint, I was just painting the last couple of days, I've been painting this piece of, uh, for a private commission of like uh, Gandalf on the bridge of Casa Doom. And um, like, I know like with the brownish red that's around it, like sometimes if you go too yellow, the yellow starts to look green. Mm. So you have to kind of pull it back. So it could be a situation like that. So the orange in the Gila, like, I think it's just what's around it as well. And then the actual specific orange. That's fascinating. You know? Yeah. I, you know, for a non-artist, that kind of stuff blows my mind because, you know, yeah. we don't, and, we don't have that kind of a thought. And then as a traditional painter, and I'm sure digital painters work with this too, because they got to deal with like, everybody deals with printing and, you know, what colors aren't going to reproduce and what are going to reproduce. So, but, you know, like dealing with how something is going to reproduce is also another headache and thing you got to think about, like with blue, especially with blues and greens, like, you know, you got to worry about like, that looks great in the painting, but it's never going to, they're never going to be able to print that. So you got to kind of work within that gamut, you know? Yeah, I, I hear so, you. Yeah. Um, are you currently working on any future magic projects right now? Oh, I, always, I always have. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'm working on stuff now, yeah. How many pieces? Um, usually, I mean, it's usually I have like usually four set, you know, about that. It's I've been working my normal workload with them. So, you know, I take as much as I can get with them um, because, you know, it's such a good client to work for. So it's, you know. Is there anything I, you're doing that that right now that you would like to uh, promote as far as like personal projects, anything like that? Um, I'm not working on any specific projects. I'm just chugging along. Like when I'm not working on uh, magic commissions, I have you know private commissions that I'm working on. Um, you know, just check out my Facebook page and my Instagram, and you know if you want to see what I'm up to. I try to post as much as I can, but I'm not the greatest poster. You know. <laughs> you you're done you you have a lot more than some people i mean like your blog was very helpful in um one final thing that i have to say before before i let you go i think it would be really cool if you and gina your wife gina did a version of each other's paintings in your style like i think it'd be <laughs> really cool to see her do like say the, the like a demon in her style and oh, yeah. do a little chipmunk <laughs> and just maybe yeah, right. do like like a mirror yeah. version of it just to see you know, sort that, of like covering each other's songs. That would be fun, yeah. I could so, do like, yeah. That'd be great. She doesn't like painting gross things as she puts it, though. So, which is what would be so much fun because yeah, she, she does yeah. such ridiculously cute, you know, animals. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it'd be fun to see what her version of something gross would, and it would end up being cute anyway. Yeah. I'll pose that to her, but <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> I, I hope so. I'm, I'm gonna yeah. for it. Well, yeah. thank you so much again for taking the time today. I appreciate oh, you're it. You're welcome, Aaron. Thank you. you. Thank day. you for interviewing me. I'm glad I got the opportunity to do it. I am glad too. I, I, it's been great. Thanks again. Right. You're welcome. Thank you. Right. Bye. Great guy and truly insightful. I have some insight too. Exciting things for the future. Unless you are watching this video and I've already released those exciting things, which would make them exciting things for the past, but you can't get excited for the past, can you? Oh God, I think I'm having a panic attack. Quick, I need a grocery bag. I feel better now. So until next time, I got a scoop.